Okay, this question is similar to the one that we just did, but it's also very different. So have a look. We are looking for the dimension of a rectangle, and this time we want the area to be 1000, and we want the rectangle to have the smallest possible parameter in this situation, right? But still, follow the same strategy. Let's go ahead and put down what we know. We are still talking about rectangle, so I will draw that rectangle for you guys. Let's say it looks like this. I will put down y, x, x, y, and this time though, we know the area first. Area is of course x times y, and we want this to be 1000 right here, right? Because he says so. Now, we are looking for the smallest possible parameter, right? So we want to make sure that we have the minimum of the parameter. And the parameter of this rectangle is just 2x plus 2y, like this. And then we look here, divide both sides by x, so we can get y being equal to 1000 over x. And then put it here. So, have a look. We get p is equal to 2x plus 2, and the y is just 1000 over x, like this. And now we have a function in terms of just x. So this is p of x, like that. And before we do the derivative, perhaps I will multiply this out. This is just 2x plus 2000 over x. It's easier this way. Anyway, the derivative, the derivative of 2x is just 2. And look at this as, you know, 2000x to the negative 1 power, bring the negative 1 to the front. 2000 stays. And x to the negative 1 minus 1 to the power, so we get x to the negative 2, which is like this on the bottom right here, right? Okay, to find the critical number, you can solve it for the equation now, or you can just keep factoring, up to you. I will factor it though. Let me factor out 2 first. So I get 2 and uh, multiply by 1 minus 1000 over x squared. This right here, I can still look at this as a difference of 2 squares by looking at the 1000 as a square root of <laughs> 1000 squared. So I will factor it again. So I have 2 times 1 minus square root of 1,000 over x times 1 plus square root of 1,000 over x. And then, of course, we can go ahead, set this guy to be 0. From here, we can get our first critical number, which is going to be x equals square root of 1,000 right here. And then this right here, of course, we get a negative square root of 1,000. And in fact, I can simplify this a little bit. This right here is the same as 100 times 10. And 100 is a perfect square, which is 10. So this right here, I can say, this is the same as saying x equals 10 square root of 10. Likewise, this is just negative 10 square root of 10. And in fact, we don't really worry about the negative because we're looking for the side of a rectangle, right? All right, so now let me just draw the number line. This is the x value, and we'll do the first derivative sign chart, sign number line whatsoever. Okay, so this is 10 square root of 10, and we also should put on negative 10 square root of 10. Anyway, pick a number less than 10 square root of 10, but bigger than that. Let's say 1. So if you put 1 right here, you get 1 minus square root of 1,000, which is going to be negative. Put 1 right here, you get positive. So all in all, we get negative. Similarly, if we put a big number, let's say 1 million, doesn't really matter. Well, actually, it does matter. But let's say x is equal to like uh, a little bit more than that. And you actually end up with positive. Okay? I cannot have x equal to 1 million. Well, actually, I could. If x is 1 million, y has to be what? Uh, leave a comment down below let me know. Anyway, as we can see, p prime goes from negative to positive. That means the function goes decreasing to increasing, which says we will have a minimum when x is equal to 10 square root of 10. And when we have that, of course, we can come back here. We will know that y, by the way, again, we don't need to look for the negative numbers. y is 1,000 over x, which is going to be 10 square root of 10. And of course, you can cancel, cancel. 100 over square root of 10. And if you would like, you can just multiply the top and bottom by square root of 10, if you would like, yeah? And then you actually end up, on the bottom, it's going to be 10. So you can cancel out 0, and you get 10 square root of 10. So in fact, you actually end up with a square. And usually, square is the key to make the 
area or the parameter to be the biggest or the smallest, right? But anyway, you should be doing the calculus like this. Anyway, finally, I will just tell you guys the answer, which is going to be the dimension. Namely, we'll just put down 10 square root of 10 meters, yeah, by 10 square root of 10 meters. And with that, we are done.